Yeah, Asalaamu Alaikum and good morning to you all. So today we will continue our discussion that is translation theory before the 20th century. We started our discussion in the last session actually we couldn't finish it, I mean all the parts of it. So today we'll try to cover most of the parts and also we'll have a basic discussion about uh, translation theories that we had in the, in the 20th century. Now, in the first slide, you can see we talked about the, what is Cowley and Dryden, these two English poets actually work well, their idea about translation. So we have seen that Dryden actually, he supported both, but basically he supported uh, sense for sense translation. He didn't go for the word for word translation, but in his later part of his career, as a translator, we have seen that he tried to combine the two extremes, that is word for word uh, translation and sense for sense translation. I hope you remember that. Um, and then uh, Dryden, he also gave us these three different uh, uh, types of uh, I mean, translation he talked about. One was metaphrase, another one was paraphrase, and the last one was imitation. So this metaphrase and imitation are the another name for imitation is adaptation. So Dryden actually, he didn't support this. This meta metaphrase and imitation basically supported paraphrase that is sense for sense translation in, a, in another sense. But he didn't go for the adaptation because in adaptation we have seen that, that the, the author, the original author of the text, I mean the source text, uh, we actually when we go for the adaptation we, we fail to show our respect for the, uh, I mean uh, the dead author or even the author of who is still alive and we actually we try to translate the original text and if you go for the adaptation, so it, in a sense, actually, according to Dryden, it's a kind of humiliation or insult to the memory or the reputation of the uh, author of the source text. So that's why uh, he also didn't suffer adaptation. Then next, uh, Dryden also, uh, I mean, he clarified his position, especially when he was translating Virgil's in it. Then he showed, and he also talked about it, that how actually he, had to make some kind of, I shouldn't say compromise, but rather actually he go for a new kind of translation, I mean, blending the both, that is uh, the, I mean, the paraphrase and the metaphrase. Now, here is his quotation from his text. He said, he said that I thought fit to stir betwixt the two extremes of paraphrase and literal translation to keep as near my author as I could without losing all his graces, the most eminent of which are the beauty of his words. So just to keep or uh, preserve the original grace, or you can say the style of the original text, and also the beauty of the words of the original text, he wanted to preserve them in the, so, in the target language, in the target text. So that's why he said that betwixt means the, between the two extremes, one is paraphrase and the metaphrase. So he blended these two because he wanted to preserve all the graces of the original text of the original writer, and also the stylistic features along with the diction or the beauty of the words he wanted to preserve them all so that's why he went for this uh, this kind of uh, you can say the blended kind of translation work, that is blending paraphrase and also metaphrase now uh, he also uh, i mean he goes on to explain that why he wanted to do that so Dryden also explained the reason of uh, this kind of blending he wanted to keep the force and the spirit of the original text and also the author so that it can be perfectly comprehended by the, uh, the, I mean, by the audience, by the readers, because he, it, it will be only then it will be perfectly comprehended or be perfectly comprehended. If you really want to do that, then you have to go for the sense for sense translation as well as you have to go for the word for word translation. So that in both ways, you can keep the style and also you can keep the uh, meaning of the words or the vocabulary and also you can preserve the spirit and the force of the original text and also the, author, the original author. Then also, Dryden, actually he, uh, from Dryden, then we, we have seen that Dolet, another uh, translator, and also he suggested an educator, and he also suggested five principles in order of importance as follows. So he uh, suggested five different principles of translation, and I explained it in our last lecture, but still I just want to go through all these five principles so that it will help you to understand uh, the discussion that is coming, uh, I mean, 
that, that way, actually, you'll have discussion on uh, some other items and factors of translation. So it will facilitate your understanding that is coming next, that discussion that is coming next. So he mentioned these five different principles of translation. First one was translator must, the translator must perfectly understand the sense and matter of the original author. So the original author's sense and matter, the matter means the text, the language, the style, all these things, and also the sense means the meaning. You must understand it. So if you want to be a translator, you must understand the sense of the matter of the original text but that was uh, created by the original author. Then second, he said that the, the second principle of it, being a good translator or for a translation, he said that the translator should have a perfect knowledge of both source language and the target language, so as not to lessen the majesty of the language. So you must have a good command of both the language the source language and also the target. For example, if you're translating from English to Bengali, then you must know English. You must have a good command of this language. That means you must be a master of that language, the English, and also you must be a master of the Bengali language. Otherwise, you can't be a good translator. <coughs> the third principle is that translators should avoid what or what renderings. That when you want to translate, you must not go for what or what translation. This is, this is another precaution that we have to take as a translator, that we cannot go for the what or what translation. Then the fourth principle is that translation should avoid Latinate and unusual forms. Here it means that we shouldn't go for unknown words uh, from the source text. Of course, we must find some kind of explanation, or at least, we, first of all, we have to try to find the equivalent uh, in the target language. That means if there is any difficult word found in the source language, in the source text, and if there is no equivalent of that particular word or phrase or that expression in the target language, then in that case, we have to find some kind of alternative to it. So we shouldn't use any unusual forms in the translation. Then the fifth one, the translator should assemble and liaise words eloquently to avoid clumsiness. So the translator should assemble and liaise words. That means he must put the words in the correct form, correct order. There should be coherence and there must be cohesion so that that is understandable. And then the, uh, I mean, the audience or the readers, they will not find it clumsy. So you have to take care of all these things. So if you really want to be good translators, then you must follow these five principles as suggested by Dorian in his work. Then we have, uh, yes, and after that, I, I guess that after this actually our understanding is clear. Is that okay? We discussed after this in our last lecture, so I just summarize the whole discussion. So do you have any questions, dear students? After this, is the discussion clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Then yes, we'll... Sir, please. Okay, then we'll move on to the next slide and our uh, rest of the discussion. Now here you see, here again, the concern is to produ reproduce the sense and to avoid war for war translation, but the stress on eloquent The stress on eloquent and natural target language form was rooted in a desire to reinforce the structure and independence of the new vernacular French language. Now, actually, he was talking about the French translation, I mean, from French to different other languages. So that's what he mentioned. So you can see we have been suggested that we cannot go for word for word, rather, actually, we have to go for sense or Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry. Uh, temporarily, actually, I got disconnected, so it's okay, no problem. Now, yes, as we are saying that how actually the importance or emphasis is given on the sense or sense translation, and how actually we have been said that we shouldn't go for the word for word translation, but at the same time, the stress is also given on the eloquence and also the natural translation. I mean, the TL form. And, uh, and it was, it, as you can see that, I mean, how actually you can have this eloquence and this, this natural translation in the target language form uh, by reinforcing the structure and independence of the new vernacular French language. So they were actually emphasizing on vernacular means the local or the native French language. Okay. That means, it's the, you know, the French language is spoken in different parts of the world. But they're emphasizing on the original French language, the vernacular, that means the local French language. 
Now, in English, perhaps, the first systematic study of translation is Alexander Fraser. Alexander Fraser Taylor's, and his essay's name is Essay on the Principles of Translation. It was published in 1790. So you see, it almost 300 years back. So you can see it from here that the Alex, Alexander Fraser Taylor's, he, or Taylor, he first actually, in English, <coughs> he gave a specific article and, and, and a specific, uh, and a, a specific article uh, on this translation. And the name of the translation, I mean, this essay is Essay on the Principles of Translation. So rather than Dryden's author oriented description, you can see that Dryden actually, he uh, mostly actually he talked about the translator, right? That how, I mean, what kind of translation actually should we have? So he, he depended heavily on the translator's quality, those five principles that he mentioned that a translator should, shouldn't do these or that. So, so it is completely author based, based on the author, based on the writer. Now, Titler defines a good translation in target reader oriented terms to be. So you see the target language reader. So Dryden is author oriented. A titler, actually he's target language reader oriented. So from the reader's perspective, he will try to define translation and its qualities. <clears throat> is that clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can understand very well that we can uh, explain translation from the <coughs> translator's perspective. <coughs> and also we can explain translators from the uh, readers, uh, from the reader's perspective. So Dryden, actually he did the, this kind of explanation from the uh, translator's perspective. Now actually we will go uh, from Titler's explanation and he will try to explain translation from the target language reader oriented terms, from their perspective target line. That means from English to Bengali, if I try to translate anything, then the thing is that, that we will uh, try to understand translation according to uh, the titles, the titles is a definition that we'll try to understand it from the Bengali reader's perspective. Okay, we're translating it from English to Bengali. So from this Bengali speaker's or reader's perspective will try to understand translation. What is translation? So that was the style or the approach of title. So that is good. I mean, from the uh, translator perspective, what is translation? And also what is good translation? We'll try to know what do you understand uh, about good translation. We'll try to know it from the reader's perspective. So now it will complement each other and our understanding of translation will be complete. Right? Right, sir. Oh, great. Now here you see uh, what he says, Titler says, that in which the merit of the original work is so completely transfused into another language as to be as distinctly apprehended and as strongly felt by a native of the country to which that language belongs, as it is by those who speak the language of the original work. Try to understand it. That in which the merit of the original work is so completely transfused into another language as to be as distinctly apprehended and as strongly felt by a native of the country to which that language belongs as it is by those who speak the language of the original world. So you see he is giving importance that the understanding of the speakers, that means I am a speaker of another language. So if there is any translation, then it must be, uh, I mean, uh, you must consider the worth of the translation or the value of the translation from the speaker's perspective. That means whether it is, uh, I mean, comprehensible or whether actually I can understand it as the speaker of that language. Then I will say it's a good translation. If it is that, that I, even in translation, I don't understand the original text, I mean the source text, and if I fail to understand it and get the main meaning, then we'll say that it's not a good translation because the speaker, that means I'm a Bengali speaker, I didn't understand the text. So he's giving importance on the speakers, uh, I mean their language, that whether actually it is understandable for the speakers. Okay. Now, here you can see what is what is he saying uh, in the previous one. Actually, he was giving us the. I mean, actually, we have we have to give importance to the uh, uh, the uh, 
on the speakers. Now here actually is explaining the whole thing. Now, and but Dulles has five principles. So we have seen that how, what Dulles actually said about translation. Just, just wait for a minute. Give me a second. Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay. Now here you see, we have already come to know about the five principles and it was suggested by Dodan. Now we will try to understand the three general laws and these are suggested by Mr. Teitler. Okay. Now we know those five principles. Yes, only. Now what are these three general laws or rules for translation? Now here he's saying that translation should give a complete transcript of the ideas of the original work. So the first thing is not from the translator perspective, it's from the translation perspective that, that obviously it, 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 also, it will also be done by the translator himself. But now here you see the importance is on, on the text. The translation should give a complete transcript of the ideas of the original text. That transcript means whatever we have in the original text, that means a text in English. And if I try to translate it into Bangla, then there must be the same thing. All the things that we have in the source text, also all those things must be there in the target language text or T, T or in the target text. That means you cannot leave anything. So everything must be incorporated. Whatever you have in the source text, that, that also be, that those things also be, I mean, should be there in the target text. Understood the first principle? Have you got it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, okay I, I, will, I will tell you, uh, explain it in Bengali. Number one is that, the source text, or the English text, the transcript is the text and the shop page, gulo, kotha gulo, everything. So that we call transcript. Uh, for example, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going to লিখে বন্ধু দিয়ে দেব তাহলে হবে কি যে আমি যা তোমাদের আজকে ক্লাস নিয়েছি যেটা বলেছি ওইটা পুরো টেক্সট আকারে তোমরা পেয়ে যাবে ওই অডিওটাই টেক্সট আকারে পেয়ে যাবে আমরা সেটা কি করি ওই যে সাবটাইটেল দেখি না মুভিস গুলোতে জি স্যার ওই যে সেখানে ক্যারেক্টার গুলো যা বলে সেটা নিচে লেখা আসে না জি স্যার তো সেটাই তো আসে ওটা ট্রান্সক্রিপ্ট বুঝা যাচ্ছে কি বলছি জি স্যার স্যার তাহলে হচ্ছে অরিজিনাল টেক্সটে যা থাকবে আমি যেই লাঙ্গুয়েজে ওটাকে অনুবাদ করছি সেই একই জিনিস ওখানে থাকতো তাহলে ট্রান্সক্রিপ্ট থাকতো তাহলে হুবহু হু বাদ যাবে না কোনো কিছু বুঝে গেছেন জি স্যার তাহলে এটা তিনটা প্রিন্সিপালের জেনারেল লস উনি বলছেন যে অনুবাদের ক্ষেত্রে এটা কিন্তু তোমার মাথায় রাখতে হবে টার্গেট সোর্স টেক্সে যা আছে টার্গেট টেক্সে সেটাই থাকতো তাহলে এটা হলো একটা প্রিন্সিপাল নাও সেকেন্ড প্রিন্সিপাল দ্য স্টাইল এন্ড ম্যানার অফ রাইটিং শুড বি অফ দ্য সেম ক্যারেক্টার উইথ দ্যাট অফ দ্য অরিজিন নাও দ্য স্টাইল এন্ড ম্যানার সো দ্য স্টাইল এন্ড ম্যানার দ্যাট উই উইল ফাইন্ড in the source text must be there also in the target text style manner so the all the things or ideas will be there that is the first principle and the uh, source text and, uh, and also the target text now the style manner that is found in the uh, source text that must be also in the target text now the third principle the translation should have all the uh, aims all the ease of the original composition now this is very important the translation should have all the ease of the original composition. That is the comfort that we, that we will get after reading the source text. You must enjoy the same comfort, same easiness also in the target text. Now I'll explain it in big body. Can you listen? Can you hear? Yes, yes sir. sir. Third principle is that the text has to
Okay, just give me an example. Uh, uh, what are the texts uh, so far actually have read by Shakespeare? I'm a Shakespeare textbook, so I could. What are the plays? Yes, sir. Okay, go to books. Give me the name. Hamlet. Hamlet. You know that there is translation of Hamlet available in the market in Bangla. You know that, right? Yes, sir. Yes, now, when you, when, you, when, you take this, when, you, when you take this translation, if you can feel the ease or the comfort of reading the original text and also the Bengali, if you feel the same, then you can say that that's a good translation. Okay? But here, actually, you must remember that you have to know both the language. Jay Manusha should Bangla, Jan and English put the Bangla. She had to know about Portuguese, the Pusta Bangla, the original Kasakina, David, she was the one. For example, I mean, the Jacob of Halpine. Katar did not to do that. Do you? बुजते the comfort or easiness that you will find in the original text must be also there in the translated text or target text. Now, next. Now, Tata's uh, first laws ties it with Dole's first two principles is that it refers to the translator having a perfect knowledge of the origin, being competent in the subject and giving a faithful transfusion of the sense and of thought. So you see, Dolet also he also suggested that that the word and the vocabulary and also the style and manner he also mentioned it right that what a translator translator should have. Similarly, when actually we uh, let let me just go back to the last slide. Also, title also actually he is also giving the importance of the same. You see the transcript and also the style and manner. That means you know, these two principles also give emphasis on the translator's knowledge of the language, right? Our Judi Bhasha, Shedokota Naitake, Duta language, Indiji of Bangladesh, Shaman Shaman Judi Shedokota Naitake. Now we can complete transcript our pocket transfer for a shamba, so stress to get target text. No, sir. No, sir. Take Akiba, I mean, Judi Indiji. Bhashari style, manner, technique, or structure, syntactical features, semantics, morphological vishayagulu. Yeah, this vishayagulu jodi amma thamna na thakhe. Ti amma ke bolo thami Bangla hoye jinish takhi transfer korte paro. Inne jodi ke Bangla thakhe, hoye aki style, manner, preserve korar shomlo. No sir. Okay. Tuni shi. Tuni ekhane bolche je. I prathom je duita principle bolna, dole tar shati duita principle kothi mila jay. Tuni ab bolche translate the neighbor bolna thakhe. Okay. Kuch past principle bolna na. जिसमें ability and correct taste of to recreate it in the target line. So you see, what was Tartler's second principle? It was second principle was a second loss. Can you see that on the screen? Can you see that on the screen? So his second principle was the style and the style and manner of writing should be of the same same character with that of the origin. So we are concentrating on his style and manner. That means the techniques, all right? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So here, here you can see in this next slide, it says the title of second law, that means that is manner and style that is talking about. Like Dulles fifth principle, so Dulles fifth principle is what we will say to me, deals with the style of the author and involves the translators both identifying the true character of this style and having the ability and correct taste to recreate it in the timeline. That means, first of all, you have to know it in the source text. That means that that, that language, for example, from English to Bengali, while I'm translating, he says that, that you have to know the English style, the style of the language, the manner of the language. If you have the command over or mastery, of that language, then in that case, you can transfuse, tan transfuse. That means you can, you can I mean, transfer that style and manner from the source text into the target language text or into the target text. You can recreate the correct taste, she shotik sha, she original shakta, original shakta, target text, source text. Target language capacity transfer the language you have a lot of the should the Matrami, we source text, say style, every manner taken, we transfer put the barb, we should a correct taste issue of a should have recreate put the barb, Kothai, target language, or the Panda. I mean, was it Yes, sir. Now the third one. Tabla talks of having all these of composition of the source text. So it, it says that the comfort of the original text is, must be there in the target language. Target text. Title regards this as the most difficult task and likens it in a traditional metaphor to an artist producing a copy of a painting. So what is he saying? That the most difficult part of the translation is the third one, that is the ease of composition. Both the target language, a source text is the ease of the comfort of the comfort of transfer of the comfort of our is target language. That means when English is comfort, that means our transfer comfort is Bangla. Do you see what I mean? Yes, sir. If you want to keep on saying that, it's a difficult task. It is a difficult task. If you want to keep on saying that, it's a difficult task. If you want to keep on saying that, it's a difficult task. To an artist producing a copy of a painting. Okay, now if I say that Prima, Prima, can you hear me? Yes, sir. For example, Prima is a painter. She is a very good painter. She is an artist. So Prima painted a picture. Uh, there is a very famous painting by Prima. And Fahim, he is another famous painter, but he likes Prima's painting so much that he wants to reproduce it. She Prima painted at the Rathu Fahim aren't you painter? Shaky could say, as an artist, Five chester was a prima we painting the shamanic like original copy the shamanic who 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 aki of each other. Amiki Busabas of Kibuzi, what pathata? For example, yes, yes, Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. It's a very famous painting, right? So if you go to France and if you go to the Louvre Museum, then in the Louvre Museum in France, you can see it there. Now, point is that where actually you will try to paint that as a painter. Exactly the exact copy of the Mona Lisa. Do you really think that it's gonna be easy? No, sir. sir. You know, it's a very difficult task. And in present present day, we have lots of uh, I mean, softwares, and with the help of those softwares, we can put together. I mean, we can compare the original painting and the and the copy. And if you take the image of both, and if you put them on the computer and analyze it with the help of the, uh, I mean, with the help of this, uh, I mean, the softwares. Then that will say that what are the differences between the copy and the original original painting, right? Yes, sir. So you see, it's very difficult to reproduce the or recreate the ease or comfort of the original text into another text. So that's what he's saying. That he's saying I mean, title saying that is the most challenging part of a trans, I mean, of translation, and this is the most difficult task. I mean, I mean. For a translator, if you really want to have a good translation, if you really want to produce a good translation, that's actually he's given that metaphor. The original painting, the character painting, the copy of the copy difficult. The copy of the copy the original text, the comfort and ease, the target language, the English, the language, the transfer, all the copy of the copy. The copy of the copy is challenging for a translator. Now, he says, thus, scrupulous imitation, scrupulous imitation should be avoided 
since, since it loses the ease and spirit of the original. Partial solution is for the translator to adopt the very soul of his art. So he's saying that you who will copy book the John Shama Haiki, Joey, ease and spirit of the original text, a shed an ostrich. Adopt the very soul of his author. So you have to adopt the very soul. What the author of the original text he intended to say, what was his intended meaning, and try to focus on his style and manner. And thus, actually, you can recreate the ease and comfort of the original text. So that, that is his suggestion. Title himself recognizes. Please give me a reminder, okay? Fine, give me a reminder, okay? Sir, a short minute. Okay. So we have seven minutes. Okay, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, fine. The title himself recognizes that the first two laws represent the two widely different opinions about translation. So first two, that is widely used. Uh, uh, Donald actually, he also suggested the same two, uh, I mean, laws or principles. And also title suggesting the same two. That means uh is five principles. A pastor principle of the title is the duta law bulletin. Donald the pastor was the pastor with the potum duta shate. Title a tinta mute duita. The first duta bileja. It has a shawai minimum. Jane tash not the yami. A tuna nijero must have a little put the yami. She don't say original shat the mill raka. She vocabulary shat the mill raka. It's still a manner shat the mill raka. It has a shawai minimum. Right? The sense for sense it has a minimum. I'm not the booster person. I do the duty principle common translation for taking it to be Chavana to do the MD. Shamosha to it in the bottom title. A book, Donato is a bucket will look at a look at a match with the other difficult task. We talk on a charisma progeny, on a technical progeny, on a police summit progeny. Okay, let's see what actually we are having here. Now they can be seen as the poles of faithfulness of content and faithfulness of form. So faithfulness of content and faithfulness of form. Amajudu do to follow Kuritale, do the Nisha, act as a faithful, not a vicious of Original content, the Kia, the original form again. You have any style, you style, and when you follow the style, then that is the form. And when you talk about the information or the sense, that actually it goes with the content, right? Understood? Right, so, content of form, the Shama Yaki Gothabuls, Akan Tamil Bartokuni, or even reformulations of the sense for sense and the word for word diet of Cesar and Saint Jerome. So what we can see the Cicero, Saint Jerome, Titler, Dole, all these famous translators, they are having the same opinion about the form and content. So by form and content, we can see that the same opinion about the form and content. So by form and content, we can see the same opinion about the form but this is the total, uh, total summary of the whole discussion that we are doing for the last two or three lectures. Now, importantly, however, just as Dolan had done with his principles, Dolan generated the principles in cut curriculum, that we actually work, title ranks his three laws in order of comparative importance. Title ranks his three laws in order of comparative importance. So here actually we can see that title that so far actually he has mentioned all these three principles, they are for comparative purpose. Then the comparison with the source text and the target text. Such hierarchical categorizing gains an, categorizing gains an importance in more modern translation theory. For instance, the discussion of translation loss and gain, which continues even to the present in some ways, in some ways presaged by Tatler's suggestion that the rank order of the law should be a, should be a means of determining determining decisions when a sacrifice has to be made. Thus, ease of composition would be sacrificed if necessary for manner, and the departure would be made from manner in the interest of sense. Now, this is very interesting. The discussion it's getting very tough, very complicated and complex, and to some extent, I must say, it's very intriguing. And we feel intrigued. How? That first two things, that is sense for sense, word for word, okay, the debate is now here, we can stop the debate, it's okay, we understand it. But now, when actually we try to compare, uh, I mean, we try to talk about the ease or the comfort of the text, the original text, to feel the same ease and comfort in the, I mean, in the target language, there lies the problem. And this is very challenging, because when actually we try to maintain the ease of the original or the comfort of the original text if we try to preserve it in the source text uh, from the source text to the target target text then sometimes we have to sacrifice the manner of this time sometimes we have to sacrifice a little bit of the content 
So how far actually we can sacrifice this? We can go for this kind of sacrifice. That is the question. That is the, uh, still actually that is the debatable part of the, or you can say the most debated portion of the part of the issue of this translation uh, field or the translation studies. I'm told that you believe it. When you have content and words, you can keep it up. What I'm saying? Are you with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Origin takes a content level form, a style, a logical practice, a monarchy with the comfort of Haria. And we who will copy Kurzi. Origin takes a cake of faithfully and would have a purchase of Chita Kurti, which is the Aram Tatsilapurba. We will Kaji Mudija the comfort chill. She comfort Tamil to Kanama target language of Kurti, the one Haria. Can Haria? Can we washer comfort? We washer content of we washer Vashate or the target language source text at the English of the Jamie Dura on the Buddha Shuri. Tarji content, Tarji structure, should the Bangladesh have a part of cause at China? Yes, sir. If I was a good who would have another transfer to the Jetamaki, one like at the port of Aramta, Amar Pasha Jetta Sakhon. She is spontaneous and not to a Jay, Hari Jay. Kotha was a set. Yes, sir. Jim Hatha took a study with structure to Allah, English at the Banga. One part. Eva Jogami Rak the Jetakonami Haiki to Hari Fila to gain. The discussion of translation loss and gain. This is the point that we actually have to focus on. The key heart set a the key part see shit also discussion at points. Mojagan said, I'm going to original text of the faithful taxi in the meantime, in doing so, in the whole process. Jacob original text of the content of his style, who would you have to practice it on key hurry feeling? I mean, what is your text? Is it faithful? How do you feel this is key? Comfort. What is? I'm sorry. Till I'm suffering from cold for a couple of days. Okay, uh, sorry. As I was saying, that we lose the, I mean, when actually we sacrifice the comfort, then we are faithful to the original text uh, by means of content and faithful. Okay? Uh, um, form. Content and form is there, but age is lost. But actually, when we try to bring the comfort or is of the original text, if we try to maintain in the original, uh, I mean, the source text, from source text to target text, then in the target text, we'll find the, uh, I mean, the same comfort and same. Is of the original text, but we lose the content and the form. Understood? So the question is how far actually we can do this kind of sacrifice? Amra Kotutuku Purjunto, source texted content ba form raktaje, ease of comfort take amikane sacrifice put the Atuba, source texted comfort take, ease take amikane preserve put the jai. I mean Kotutuku Purjunto sacrifice put the barbu content table form take, ease a reaction debate to her. Yes, sir. So, as a translator, you have to consider all these things, the demarcation line, you have to determine that how far you can sacrifice. And you have to decide that whether actually you are going to sacrifice the content or the form, or whether actually you are going to sacrifice the ease and comfort. So, you have to decide as a translator. And there lies the debate, there lies the challenge as a translator. Now we'll finish with uh, after discussing this. Now here's the title's laws are said by some to have influenced the work of the renowned Chinese thinker and translator Yan, Yan Fu at the turn of the 19th and 20th century. So you see, Yan Fu, a Chinese translator, he was influenced by Titus these three laws. It is short preface to his translation of Aldous Huxley's, uh, Aldous Huxley's Evolution and Ethics. So he, this Yan Fu, he translated Aldous Huxley's, is a very, very famous uh, dramatist, playwright, and also an author. Alice Huxley. So he, he translated Alice Huxley's Evolution and Ethics, and there actually in the preface he mentioned, Yan Fu states his three translation principles as fidelity, fluency, 
and elegance. So now you see, we have found another three principles, but these three principles are influenced by Titler's three principles. Got it what I'm saying, dear students? Yes, sir. So we are getting, we are getting more about translation. Okay, and it will be easy for us. Don't get confused or don't be scared. We'll, it will be easy for us day by day. So now his three principles, fidelity and fluency, and those je, da, and ya, and these are Chinese words, and we, don't, we will not concentrate on those. We'll just concentrate on these. Fidelity in Bengali, it means vishwasthata. I mean, original text said, shathe, kato duko vishwasthata rekhetsi, na ki abhi shekhan teke pochur vichyut hoye gatsi. That is fidelity. Fidelity regarding or in relation, in reference to content and in reference to form, that means style, that is fidelity. And fluency, that goes, and elegance, these two actually, it goes with the ease of comfort, okay? So we should exert enormous influence on 20th century Chinese translation practice and theory. The Chinese translation, in regarding Chinese translations practice and theory, in that case, the Yan Fu's, these three principles actually influence all the Chinese translators in the 20th century, 20th century in China. Yan Fu himself generally placed fidelity above threat. See? So for him, fidelity was more important than fluency. That means the content and the form. He gave importance of content and form. That is the fidelity. Understood what I'm saying, dear students? Yes, sir. Though he didn't always abide by the hierarchy and in fact was promoting his own ideology through the selection of philosophical texts and textual manipulation to which he subjected them. So though Yan Fu actually he gave more importance to fidelity, but sometimes uh, he would give, I mean, he would, he would himself as, I mean, he was the proponent of these three principles, but sometimes he himself will transgress it. He himself will not abide by this, the hierarchy. That means fidelity is number one, Number two is fluency, and the third one is elegance. So in hierarchy, fidelity is more important, but sometimes he'll sacrifice this. Sometimes he will give more importance to the fluency, then fidelity will come later, and, and elegance will come at the end. So you see, sometimes actually he, he didn't maintain this hierarchy by himself, though actually he proposed these three, uh, uh, I mean three uh, principles of translation. So you see, translators, they take, they, sometimes they take liberty. So, as a translator, you have to decide that whether you will go for the fidelity or fluency or elegance, whether actually you will go for the content or whether you will go for the form and style, I mean the, the form and style, and other, whether actually you will go for the comfort. So as a translator, you have to decide it. And you have to think about it because you will have to consider the context, you have to consider your culture, you have to consider about your linguistic phenomena and also the linguistic situations. You have to think about your political situations, all these things you have to consider, then you can decide that which one or which ones actually you are going to follow in your translation works and while actually you are translating. Understood what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, so after this, I would like to, I mean, with that note, I'd like to conclude our to today's discussion. I, ha I believe that you have understood that. Just consider yourself from now on that you are a translator. From today, I will request you to consider yourself when you read translation studies, I will request yourself to consider yourself that you are a translator. Got it, what I'm saying? Fine, what will you do when you, when you will start this subject? What will you do? Uh, I uh, must concern about the content form. No, I say that what should should we do? What should what should should you consider yourself actually when you will start this subject? You should consider yourself as a banker, right? Should you consider yourself as a banker um, when you uh, uh, to try to read this? Uh, I mean, try to read the subject. Yes, you should consider from now on. Think about yourself that you are a translator. Okay, Prema. So from now on, you are a translator. Okay. Understood what I'm saying? Rigo, yes, sir. When you read this subject, you should consider yourself yes, that you are a translator, okay? Yes, sir. Then it will help you to understand this. Yes, Otherwise, you will not get it. If you can't consider yourself that I am a translator, then you will not be able to consider all these points. Then it will be clear to you that which way actually you should go for the translation. Uh, inshallah, if God permits, we will uh, go for translation work and I will give you some text and you have to translate them from Bengali to English and from English to Bengali. So it will come later. First of all, we'll try to understand the theories. So far, actually, you have got some basic knowledge about translation theories. And I believe that now, if I give you any task, 
And if you go for any translation practically, I believe that now you will be able to translate something considering all these theories and it will help you to understand this. But alternate unless actually you do it practically, you will not be able to give the real taste of this translation work and you will not be able to consider yourself as a translator. But for the right, right at, at this moment, for our understanding, just imagine, just fancy yourself that you are a translator. Okay, so thank you very much. Thanks for your active participation. And we will discuss more about these translation theories and other stuff in our coming lectures. So if you have any question, you can ask me now, or you can also contact me later on Facebook, or on Messenger, or even on WhatsApp, or you can call me directly if you have any question regarding these uh, theories. Okay? Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Do you have any question, or do you have anything to say right now? No, sir. No, sir. All right, then in that case, we can call it today. So see you next time, inshallah, and we'll have a discussion on this more in our next lecture. Thank you. Take care of yourself. Thank you, sir. You're most welcome. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.